So the campus I work on is right next to the beach and we're having a weird warm winter sunny day so I thought we'll do anatomy on the beach today. We can't do anatomy on the beach can we? I'm going to talk about lymph nodes today. Um, there's not really much I can point at but let's go back to the lab and do some drawings. Okay there's one other side effect of, a, uh, of an unusual winter sunny afternoon and that is there's nobody around. Now we always talk about lymph nodes, um, mostly when we're considering about spread of cancer, where does the lymph flow and that sort of thing. But the structure of a lymph node is surprisingly interesting. And as usual, the structure, the structure explains its function. And we'll get to that. So we'll look at the basic structure of a lymph node. Now I haven't got any models of lymph nodes, so I'm gonna to have to do some drawing, very, very simple drawing. Uh, and then we'll talk about we'll talk about the function. Maybe we'll do a little bit of an introduction, introductional overview of the lymphatic system as a whole, shall we? Okay. Um, I think the only lymph nodes I can find on any of the models in here, and I've got a big collection of models, are these guys here. These would be the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. There's the inguinal ligament, it's superficial because we're superficial to the fascia here. There's another deep set. Deep to the uh, fascia, which would be the deep inguinal lymph nodes. Anyway, the purpose of the lymphatic system, just as a reminder, is mm, twofold. But one, um, anatomically, is that when tissues are perfused with blood by a capillary bed um, the capillaries tend to be leaky and they leak out fluid into the tissues and not all of that fluid is collected by the venous side of the capillary bed so the lymphatic system is a one-way flow collecting the fluid from the tissues and then taking them back towards in the case of the upper limb the shoulder and the neck um, but down here taking it up back up into the pelvis abdomen thorax to the cisterna chile, to the thoracic duct, and then the thoracic duct drains in here. We've got the internal um, jugular vein and the subclavian vein on the left side. The thoracic duct drains in there, and also the limb from this limb, this side of the head and neck. And then there's a, another duct, the right lymphatic duct, duct, which is draining lymph from the right upper limb, right side of the head and neck into the, the venous angle on on this side. That's the lymphatic system in a nutshell. The other really important role it has is in being the immune system. All right, we talk about the immune system. Whenever we talk about the immune system, we talk about cells and cells interacting with things and antigens and antibodies. But what is the organ of the lymphatic system? Oink. So there are around 400, 450 lymph nodes in the body grouped together in areas. You don't have to remember every single one, you just have to remember the groupings and how the lymph flows into them and flows out of them, where it goes, that sort of thing, the direction of flow. Lymphatic system being a one-way thing, not a closed loop. And the aim of the lymphatic system is to return lymph and cells and stuff back into the blood. So they're, you know, they're little ditty things, maybe a centimetre or so, big, a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. Um, and they do change in size as well. And they've, they've, got, they've got a bit of a connective tissue capsule. Um, and they've got a hilum, and they've got a cortex, and they've got a medulla. Oh, that fits good. Um, so they've got, if we look at the histology, you'll see they've got this, this capsule around here, a bit of a connected tissue, giving it a bit of shape and strength and support. And that connected tissue will dive in as trabeculae, right? Which will go into the thing. But the, the important idea really is that there are a number of lymphatic vessels draining into the lymph node, right? So we've got lymph coming in, 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 but only one afferent, sorry, one efferent lymphatic vessel draining lymph out of the lymph node, which means that we tend to have like lots and lots of lymphatic vessels peripherally, and as we go through a collection of lymph nodes, we have slightly fewer lymphatic vessels. And this lymphatic vessel might pass on to another lymph node, and another lymph node, and another lymph node, before eventually getting back to the circulation. We have, um, so this is the hilum, and there's also a 
an artery and a vein, well, arterioles and venules running into the lymph node, which is, which is kind of important. Let's just do that kind of like, you know, there's the arterial bit and there's like the venule bit. But imagine lots of arterioles and venules running into the lymph node, something like that. And that's quite important. If you look at the structure of the lymph node, so if we look down the microscope, we can see that the lymph node is incredibly cellular. It's full and full of cells, it's packed full of cells, which is why it makes it very difficult for me to dissect them out from most tissues because they're soft and squidgy. And that capsule means they don't really stand out from the fat that's around them and the other connective tissue, right? Um, they're quite soft. Uh, and there is a cortex, so there's a cortex around the outside. And then there's a medulla centrally. And what we see is that the cortex is particularly packed with cells, right? And these are lymphocytes. We've got B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes in the cortex. And in fact, the, the B lymphocytes get pulled out into the outer part of the cortex. This is cytokine mediated, right? There are chemical cues that attract them and make them stay in certain places. Anyway, signaling, it's great. Um, and then the paracortex is kind of around the medulla. So if there's kind of a, um, if this is kind of draining from under the medulla, something like that. If we look in the medullary space in the center of the lymph node, there's a lot of space there. There's not so many cells. And if we extrapolate this into three dimensions, what this means is that the lymph that's draining into the cortex of the lymph node is actually passing through the lymph node through like little sinuses, sinusoids, spaces between the cells to get to the medulla and then drain out through that leaving lymph, that lymphatic vessel there. So we find B lymphocytes around the outer part of the cortex and then we find T lymphocytes in what we call the paracortex, this bit of cortex next to the medulla. And that's important functionally. Um, we'll also find macrophages, dendritic cells, and that sort of thing within, the, within uh, the lymph node. And of course, if other cells are passing in the lymphatic um, circulation, they're also going to end up in lymph nodes as well. The other thing that we can see in the cortex, we can see like masses of cells lumped together into little circles, can't we? Well, those are follicles. Um, Primary follicles are, are patches of lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, B cells that are just kind of sat there waiting, not doing much. Um, and if, usually in response to an infection, an antigen triggers stuff, magic happening, then um, B lymphocytes start to proliferate and start to uh, produce um, plasma cells and memory B cells and that sort of thing, and more lymphocytes, and they, they want to chuck out antibodies, as in, if there's an infection, then that primary follicle becomes a site where lymphocytes are proliferating, so it becomes a secondary follicle with a germinal centre in the middle where stuff's going on, immune stuff's going on. And of course, if you're making more cells inside a lymph node, then that lymph node's going to get bigger. It's going to expand. I wonder if the blood supply increases as well. Maybe this, I don't know. Um, but of course, we know you, you get swollen lymph nodes in response to infection, don't you? And that's one of the reasons why is because they're making more immune cells, more white blood cells. Now, this thing here, it turns out is rather cool functionally and structurally. There's a region here um, called the HEV. Like there's a region of endothelium um, called the high endothelial venule. And the endothelial cells here are very specialized in that they can allow lymphocytes to pass into the lymph node. And um, they kind of like attach to the endothelial cells and like roll over them through the gap between endothelial cells and get into the lymph node. And antigen presenting cells can do this as well. So this means that cells in the blood and cells that want to present antigens, the things that trigger an immune response, to the lymphocytes, the cells of the immune system, can get passed across this high endothelial venule into the lymph node and bam, immune system is on with doing it. 
Isn't that cool? Um, and then this description here of, of, of lymphocytes, B cells, T cells, uh, high endothelial venules, and that sort of thing, that's very similar for most uh, lymphatic tissues around the body. Don't forget, we've looked at these before, haven't we? The tonsils, for example, these are masses of lymphoid tissue. Um, Waldeyer's tonsillar ring around this opening into the body. We've got the other mucosa associated lymphoid tissues. We've got the gut associated lymphoid tissues and the payers patches in the ileum. All of those are doing something similar. They're stores of, 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 of immune cells, of lymphocytes, which can be presented with, with potentially problematic things, you know, antigens chop, chopped off the surfaces of pathogens, which the body wants to see and go, whoa, we ain't having more of that in here, and then, bam, kills the bacteria or the virus or whatever other pathogen is causing the problem. So, whilst this structure is particular to the lymphocyte, the lymph node, particularly the flow of lymphatic fluid through it, the concepts here apply to other lymphoid tissues in the body. Spleen's a bit different, but spleen hasn't got an HEV, I think mo most, maybe all other lymphatic tissues have got an HEV, and the spleen has something very similar to the high endothelial venule. <sighs> okay then, you get the idea, right? So what about the, uh, the functions then? Okay, so what are, what are the lymph nodes for? Well, they're a store then of B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes and macrophages. They're a site where the immune system can get switched on. Now, I, I'm, I'm not an immunologist, I'm a very simple anatomist. Right, here's the thing. You know that idea that the eye is too complicated to have evolved? That's, that's not my argument, that's an argument that's out there, therefore it must have been designed or created or whatever. You want to have a look at the immune system. You look at the immune system, it's so complicated, the eye looks straightforward, the eye is easy. Immune system, pfft. There's a lot going on in there, and you can see how it has evolved because it's constantly being challenged by microbes and pathogens and that sort of thing. Anyway, what happens in a, in a, what happens in a lymph node then? Well, so your lymph nodes, um, they can see lymphatic fluid draining from the tissues of the body. So if you've had an injury, if the skin's being broken, maybe some pathogens have got into the lymphatic system, some other cells have got to them and chopped them up and taken off their cell surface um, proteins and have started presenting them as antigen, antigens. They want to find the lymphocyte to say, hey guys, do you recognize this? Um, and also, um, they're seeing uh, antigen presenting cells and lymphocytes passing from the blood. So the lymphocytes can see the blood and they can see um, the lymphatic fluid, kind of, to a certain extent. Now the lymphocytes, they can also move around. That's the other idea. So you've got, you know, you know if you're immune to something, you've got a store of memory B cells that have seen that antigen before. They've seen one of the cell surface proteins of, of that bacteria or virus or whatever. And they've learned that, so if they see it again, they can mount an immune response and make loads of, was it IgG antibodies straight away and start chucking them out and get the immune system going to, to kill that pathogen before you even realize that you've been in, infected. Um, now, lymphocytes can flow from lymph node through the lymph to another lymph node and hang out for a bit and then flow across to another lymph node and hang out for a bit, and eventually they get back into the blood supply, they swill around in the blood, they can pass through the high endothelial venule into another lymph node, or they could go and uh, make their way to the spleen and hang out in the spleen for a little while. So these cells are moving around the body constantly from place to place. So um, an antigen presenting cell might present an antigen to a lymphocyte from, by passing to a lymph node through the lymphatic fluid or passing uh, to the lymph node from the blood. So if an antigen is presented to a B lymphocyte then, to antigen presenting cells, dendritic cells, that sort of thing, um, and um, a lymphocyte might respond to that antigen and become partially activated, it's starting to get going. It then needs to bind with an appropriate T lymphocyte and then becomes fully activated um, and that lymphocyte, that then starts off the chain reaction of the, the B lymphocyte starts um, proliferating, starts copying itself. 
and um, then that's when you get your, your secondary follicles forming inside the lymph node. So the lymph node is then active, the cells in the lymph node are active. The B lymphocytes can then make plasma cells and the plasma cells can then start making antibodies. So they start chucking antibodies out into the blood and I guess out into the lymph as well. But antibodies start swilling around the body and then um, the antibodies in the blood start forming immune complexes. Is that with IgM? Um, which then return back to this, they go around the body, they return back to the lymph nodes and that triggers follicular dendritic cells, so dendritic cells within those secondary follicles, those get switched on and they trigger like clonal expansion, proliferation of the B lymphocytes, but with a little bit of somatic mutation in that proliferation, so they fine tune the antibody that they produce that binds to the antigen to fight to hopefully make like the best antibody to match that antigen that it can and then after that they can make more IgG um, antibodies oh so is it IgM first then IgG second probably um, yeah and then um, and then so you make the plasma cells you make the IgG antibodies you chuck those out but also then you make your B lymphocyte memory cells which are making that ideal antibody to recognize that ideal antigen, which then hangs around. And that's like your, you, that's when you develop immunity in it. That's when you, uh, you can fight off infection faster next time. And all that I learned from my immunity buddy who is trying to teach me stuff. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that the lymph nodes are like the distributed organ of the immune system. It's like the organ of the immune system, but it's distributed all throughout the body to help all those things happen. Isn't that cool? Of course, you can get, you can get the cells to do the exact same thing by presenting just the antigen in like a safe, non-replicating form, can't you? And then that same thing that I just described happens and you develop this long-lasting immunity. That's called vaccination. Yeah, immune system, it's very clever. So hopefully, um, next time we talk about lymph nodes, because the other thing about the lymphatic system is that if you have an uncontrolled proliferation of cells in a tissue, a tumor forms, then it's very hard for those cells to break into the blood vessels because they've got, you know, thick, tough, proper walls around them. They have to erode through those walls really to get into the blood supply. Whereas the lymphatic system is kind of, um, it's a one way flow, but it's got like these quite big flap valves in the wall of the lymphatic vessel. So it's actually quite easy for cell sized objects to get into the lymphatic system. So that's, this is why we bring them up so much is because this is how cancers spread. This is why the layout of the immune system and where lymph nodes are found is so important because if you have an enlarged lymph node and there's no infection um, and the person has other signs of a cancer are those the clues that you need maybe um, but hopefully now whenever we talk about lymph nodes in terms of you know uh, cancer metast metastases um, and we talk about the uh, flow of the lymphatic system you'll be thinking about the actual anatomical structure of a lymph node capsule lymph flowing in flowing through the lymph node which is filled with cells b lymphocytes t lymphocytes macrophages and out through that core and the blood supply links and stuff anyway i thought it was i thought it was quite cool we just take lymph nodes for granted but there's actually there's actually quite a bit of structure to them anyway enough of my ramblings see you next week if you can uh, if you can bear it <laughs>